yeah, I think that covers most questions. Oh, I never talked about jumping. Shit. Next time I dial update the FAQ with more shit. There's a power up. Skeletons can hit me while I'm crouching, so maybe that's a shitty strat. Come on. Oh my god, dude. This is so slow. I died in. I tried to do a really hard strat and then I died. It's. Oops, why did I get that? I already had it. Shit. <laughs> Stupid. I do want about 15 red jewels by the time I get to here, which is good, because that gives me uh, enough holy water to kill the bone dragons at the top of Castle Wall. This guy, dude.
Good. Excellent. <clears throat> I have not played the IQ yet. I have really low health. Is it hot in my room today? Yeah, kinda. Is this game fun from a non-speedrunning perspective? I was addicted to this game for a week straight. So in my opinion, yeah. It was really challenging for me to beat this game on hard mode as Reinhardt. That was a big challenge for me. I think people don't like this game because the graphics aren't that good and the camera is pretty bad. I don't even want to try to grab that. I might pick up the knife. Thanks, Stanzi. I feel pretty confident I can get sub 50 tonight if I don't do anything stupid.
Like, I could have got it last run, but I tried to do a risky strat that saves like 8 seconds or something. And I died. Uh, you can't really do much with the camera, to be honest. Like, you really can't control the camera in this game at all. Like, realistically, you're never going to be trying to mess with the camera, because it's not... You don't really have much control over it. <clears throat> like, I almost never do anything with the camera in this game, except... Uh, during the bullfight, I'll go into C up, first person view, to reduce lag. That's the only time I'd change the camera from the default, because the other settings are like, you can't really control the camera. Yeah, um, every N64 cart has a number engraving on the back of it. If there's a letter in the engraving, that means it's version uh, 1.1 or higher. If there's no letter and it's just numbers, then you have version 1.0. And in the case of Nintendo 64 games, I'm pretty sure every Nintendo 64 game with multiple versions, you want the 1.0 version. The other re-releases are always worse, uh, as far as I can think. So, uh, like Ocarina of Time, and um, well, it's a little bit different from Mario 64. It's like a special Rumble Pack version, but it's only in Japan. But yeah, you want the original version of all the N64 games, not the higher number. Also, Banjo Kazooie is another one. There's Banjo Kazooie 1.1, and that fixed a small glitch. Which is, like, annoying. So, I can't think of any version differences with higher numbers that are better for N64 games. Unless we're talking about, like, Virtual Console versus N64. In which case, Virtual Console is usually better, just because it has less lag and faster loading. I like when he does the vertical slash, because I kind of dodge that pretty much every time. Ha! <clears throat> GoldenEye 1.2 is better than 1.1. <laughs> True, but that's not version, that's control scheme. <laughs> that's, that's funny though. That's funny. Got him. Almost got her. That was pretty good, actually. If only she decided to do a different animation. She's dead. Not bad. Goldeneye? Okay, in Goldeneye there's a whole bunch of different ways to play the game. In terms of like how you control the game, you can just change the options. And the different options are called 1.1, 1.2, and stuff like that. And it turns out in Goldeneye, if you use 1.2, you can turn faster like around corners. And it actually makes you be able to complete the game faster. It's a little bit weird to get used to though. Shit. I didn't get the skip. Better than dying. I'd rather not have to fight that boss though, if I can help it.
<clears throat> Actually, I looked. Uh, I like reading up on different games and their mechanics, and we were just talking about Goldeneye. That there's apparently something really crazy in Goldeneye where, like, the way your max speed works is like after you've been running at full speed for a while, it increases the cap. So you can actually run like. Like, you start running, right? And you're strafing as well to get max speed. And if you do that for a while, it takes a couple seconds, I think. You build up even more speed. Um, like, it lets, it just, it increases your, the, your cap for your speed, so you get more speed, basically, if you've already been running for a while. Which is an interesting mechanic, but apparently, uh, if you use one of the crazy control schemes where you have to use two N64 controllers at the same time, you can actually build up some of that like initial speed timer thing during the intro cutscene for some of the levels. So to get like the ideal time on a couple of the levels, you would have to uh, have two controllers plugged in, and on the second controller you'd be running forward during the intro cutscene, and then when the when the actual game starts, when the level starts, you would already have the 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 increased cap for the max speed before you're supposed to be able to, which would let you beat the level about a half second faster or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think I'm screwed. I'm screwed. Fuck. Fucking lizards, dude. Dude, lizards ruin my runs. <clears throat> Every time. God, it's so annoying. Am I gonna run Goldeneye? Probably not. I was thinking of running Perfect Dark though. That would be pretty fun to try. I'd be so bad at it though. I'd be like complete noob, but someday maybe I'll try to learn it. How do I do the midair jump in Forest of Silence? Um, if you fall off a slippery slope, you get your jump back, but only on version 1.0. And that lets you avoid taking fall damage so you don't die. You basically have to jump to reset the height before you get auto-killed for falling too far. And that lets you get down to the switch without dying. It sequence breaks the first level. I don't know how many people actually notice that, but you're not supposed to be able to do that jump. <clears throat> yeah, there's so much I have to do. <laughs> And that I want to accomplish. Like, I think the most important thing. Shit. Hmm. I think, like, the most important thing we can do is help. Is try to, like. Like, right now, I feel like the speedrun community is, like, growing and expanding. But we're not. Um, we're kind of scattered, and we're not. We're not. We don't have a system. And if we had a system in place, the leaderboards is what I want to do. I think it'd have ridiculous potential to grow the community a lot further than it currently is. 
And that is the thing that I care about the most. Unfortunately, I was hoping by now we would have speedruns live races completely figured out and good now. But there's still some stuff we need to do, like uh, team races, and uh, there's uh, there are recent issues with the IRC server, and also um, we need to fix some aspects of the site still concerning races. So there's still stuff to do uh, on that front too. So I don't know. There's <laughs> in conclusion, there's just a ton of shit that we need to do. And I really want um, to get it all done, and I'm really excited. But it will probably take a long time. But I, I am really, I don't know. I feel like I see the potential this community could head in if we, if we build it, if we build this thing like correctly. I think it could be ridiculous. Like, obviously, what does everyone ask when they come into speedrunning stream? What is the record? What's the record? Who is the record? And then, how do I find out more about the run? I want to learn more about the run. I want to know... I want to know how big the community is for this game, and, like, how good the times are, and, like, when people got the runs. I want to see the videos, right? Like, that information should be, like, accessible instantly to everybody, but it's not. Unfortunately... It's just a word of mouth type thing right now, and I know what I'm. What I want to do is unify the entire thing. That's what I mean. I've been having discussions with people for months and months and months concerning this stuff, and um, I still believe in my heart that it's like the right thing to do, and it has the most potential. Of course, you have to do it really fucking carefully and perfectly, though. If it's not perfect, it's gonna suck. It has to be, like, really, 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 really well designed to handle this community. Because this community is big, it's got a ton of variety, different games, different rules. Different systems. Here's what I can, I guess, I guess what I'm going to try to do is sometime in the near future, I think I'm going to try to put together a PDF document that outlines, like, everything. Because, like, right now it's not all written down and, like, a lot of people don't know, like, what's going on with the whole project. And I think if I had that PDF then, like, I think a PDF would be a good way to put it. And then just, like, distribute it, and then then we could get some constructive criticism and, like, more discussion and everything that would need to happen to further the project. And obviously there's two sides to this project. There's the implementation, like, there's the actual implementation, like, the code, the design, etc. Then there's the, there's, like, the brainstorm thought process and everything, so... We're still sort of in the first phase of it.
my opinion on Twin Galaxies. You know, it's, it's really interesting. I feel like Twin Galaxies is an example of basically the idea gone wrong, right? They have leaderboards for games, right? But it's not a good system, and it's all falling apart. And that's a beautiful example of what happens if you do it wrong. So we, it's our obligation to do it right for like the good of every of like the whole community. You know what I'm saying? That has to be done incredibly well. It can't just be like some guy making rules that are arbitrary. I hit the pillar. <clears throat> Where did they go wrong? There are a lot of things went wrong with Twin Galaxies. Although I'm not familiar with their whole story, but there's a lot of things wrong. I think that was a successful despawn. Yep. Throw holy water down. I think the lizards spawn at a random, uh, a random cell, basically. So, I don't know, a random locker. I mean. Am I planning to spend my life in a graphic design career? I don't know what I'm planning to do. <laughs> right now I'm planning on streaming. I don't like to think very far in the future, but I'm not worried if streaming all goes under. I have plenty of skills and I'm sure I could get a pretty good job without much problems. So... I don't know. I don't look too far into my own future. It, maybe it sounds really cheesy or like silly, but the thing with the leaderboards is like that's like what I seriously want to do. Like that's what I want to fucking do. That's what I want to focus on for the foreseeable future. His legs are still up. Yeah, I got him. Sniped with the holy water. Scumbag. Okay. <laughs> that 
That sounds good, Vicious. <laughs> You're gonna be our official artist. This is Carrie's cousin. She's been like possessed. That's the plot of that fight right there. It'd be really funny to fall off right there. Okay. Let's not do die here. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. This sucks. Go down. Thank you. isn't low enough. I would die. Okay, that's low enough. Ow. That's not low enough. That's low enough. Go. I feel like if I can beat Tower of Sorcery, I should not die for the rest of the game, most likely. And I would probably guarantee a new personal best. It's possible I could die in the Clock Tower, but I feel like I'm pretty good at the Clock Tower. I shouldn't die there. There is one tricky jump that I might die on, but... Jump of Destiny. Got it.
Okay. Uh, you can't really use the term pixel perfect in a 3D game because pixels are dependent on where the camera is. So unless the camera is always consistently in exactly the same spot, the term pixel perfect doesn't have any value as like a term describing uh, how close a jump is or how tight a trick is. Okay. Let's do this. I'm gonna wait. I'm a big baby. I could have made that actually, but I just didn't feel like throwing my run away right here. I'm just gonna chill again. Fuck. I should use the orb to destroy that. Okay, I almost died right there, which is scary. Alright, this part. This part is the butt clencher. I finally made it past the Tower of Sorcery. Huzzah. Jesus. My time's looking pretty decent too. Oops. I'm not getting any freebies, so I'm not sure if you can force a freebie. Like, right there's a freebie. Got her. Wait, no, I didn't. She got up another force field because I timed it wrong. Ah, oh, lame. Shit, this fight is not good. There we go. I could have been better. <sighs> Damn, my time here sucks. That fight was bad. I'll admit that I have not practiced the end game boss fights since I got my old run. There's some strats that I could do better. Um, I'm just ready to get my sub 50 though. That's all I want right now. Let's get it. Holy shit, I thought I was going to die right there. I just wasted a lot of time, fuck. Come on, I'm fucking choking in the clock tower, how embarrassing. 
What's funny is I actually think I choked in the clock tower in my best run too. <laughs> so this isn't anything new. Although I choked in a different room. There we go. I just wanted to grab that ledge. That's all I wanted to do. Okay. I was hoping to save time in the clock tower, but I don't think I'm gonna now. Alright, this is the room with the hard jump. So, I could potentially throw away the run in this room. There we go, got it. The reason that jump is hard is because, uh, it's hard to explain, but basically that corner that I jumped out of, you can't jump out of the corner. You have to be, like, kind of in the middle instead of the corner. It's really strange. But, uh, yeah. Okay, I got that key. That's where I choked in my uh, my old best time. I fell down there without the key. Okay. Oh, you can make that jump without grabbing that ledge. Okay, I did save time. Wow, there's a lot of people watching. Damn it. Yes. Oh, fuck. Fuck. What an asshole. Fuck this guy. Okay, I got him.
on. I'm gonna get a 48. I just need one more hit. There it is. Okay. <laughs> 4810. Alright, I'm pretty satisfied now. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, the record is, uh, nearly three minutes faster than this. Um, I had bad lizards in the waterways. I, I, I basically failed to skip the boss fight. And I failed to despawn the lizards, I think, once in the castle center. And my fights with Dracula 2, Dracula 3, and Ectrice were all bad fights. Uh, also, I could have got better luck in the Forest of Silence, and I could have done the crazy strats in Tower of Sorcery. But, I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm pretty happy with that time. So, uh, hooray. <laughs> Yeah, I fell in the clock tower too, that's another one. This will go on YouTube as the new personal best. Yeah. I'm sad to say that I don't have my Chinese power cable, so I can't play my IQ. Um, I can give you guys a bonus Commander Keen run. I can do that for you guys. Um, I'll get that set up. I'll let you guys see it up until the credits and then I'll bust out the Commander Keen. What's funny about this ending is it lags really, really hard. When she walks up and there's the grave. Yeah, this part. You can see the game just lagging, struggling.
All right, let's go. Whoops, what did I just do? Oh, whoops. Okay, there we go. So getting pushed by that little pusher robot off the pole means that one of the variables was never cleared properly. And they used the same variable for climbing the pole as they did for secret level warp. So when I exit this level, I end up in the Korra 3 base, which is the game's secret level. And this is the longest level in the game, unless you jump off the wall like this. If you jump off the wall, which is hard to do, it's actually intentional. You can get up here where the secret area is. I grab all this ammo, and then I get up here, and then I can break this fuse. Um, this fuse lets you get to the best ending. Then after I beat the secret level, it warps me to the top of the Armageddon machine. So now I'm at the end of the game already. So here's the second last level and I die on this guy, and then I save my game, and then I load my game, and then I save my game, and then I load my game, and then I save my game, and then I load my game. And that lets me stay alive as I go out of bounds, which triggers the level being completed. So now I'm on the last level in the game, which I have to beat normally. And then this is the dog pit. You're not supposed to come in from the top, but I got lucky. I got through on my first try. I use all my ammo to kill the dogs. By the way, in Commander Keen, you die in one hit, so uh, you gotta be really fucking careful. I need to get these blue gems because they're keys to open doors, and there's no way to skip the doors. I don't want to get zapped by their electricity. Okay, there we go. Get the last key. Now, I think the Shikati Master, yeah, he's still chilling up there. I need to wait for him to go away. Okay, he needs to teleport the hell out of here. I can't do anything if he's up there. He actually is trying to kill me. Okay, there he's, he's gone. Hopefully he just didn't spawn up here. Okay, good. Now I use my last key. And I draw these mines. This is actually one of the most interesting ways to beat a game I've ever seen. You get these mines that try to kill you and you lure them. And this is intended. This is like the intended way to beat the game. But you have to destroy this machine right here the quantum explosion dynamo and it I died fuck that's so lame I have to redo it <laughs> oh man I didn't beat the credits now that's so stupid I was gonna beat the credits and then I died <laughs> shit that's sad I failed commander keen you lose Okay, there we go. I beat it.